Okay, no cheating, ladies and gents. If you haven't had a go at this test yet, please don't go through the answers until you've actually had a go. Um, because this is just a little progress check, really for you, more than anything else, to see how Tectonics is going. It also might prompt you to send Nick some questions for his Q&A. So please, 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 no cheating. Okay, so question one. Don't penalise yourself for spelling. We were looking for Pangea for question one. Pangea. The man <clears throat> who kind of kicked off the whole theory of plate tectonics by simply noticing that the coastlines of South America and Africa kind of looked like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle was Sir Francis Bacon. But I'm sure Sir Bacon is absolutely fine. I'm sure he'd be happy with that. Uh, number three, the most important man, my favourite, is Wegener, Alfred Wegener. And the actual person that gets the credit question four is J. Tuzo Wilson, but I will accept Bacon Wegener Wilson, okay? Question five is probably the most important thing in this whole module. If you have learned a definition of what plate tectonics means, that's amazing. Well done you. If you haven't, there's still time. Don't worry exactly about how you phrased it, but what you want is something like it's the idea that the Earth's crust is divided into plates which move. As long as you've got that general gist, you can have the mark for question five. An example of biological evidence, I will accept just fossils. If you wanted to be specific and give me an actual name, well, you can have a bonus point for that. So you've got a choice of um, Glossopteris, Mesosaurus, <clears throat> Synopnathus and Lystrosaurus. They were all the things from that jigsaw puzzle that you might have done in week one, but I will simply um, accept fossils. Seafloor spreading is the idea that as you move away from a mid-ocean ridge, the plate gets older, which completely confirms that you've got new crust being created at divergent margins, and then it moves away from the divergent margin and gets destroyed. <clears throat> Question eight. I've googled this for you. So any diagram that's sort of got some arrows on it really. The idea that heat rises and then it moves away from the source of heat and sinks. So anything, so there's a reasonably simplified version, there's another version. As long as it's something like that, you can give yourself the marks. Okay, so A is the asthenosphere. B, I will accept mantle or mesosphere. C is the outer core. D is the inner core. E, lithosphere or crust. And then the F is pointing at a discontinuity. There are in fact three discontinuities. The moho, the Gutenberg and the Lehman, and that one's actually pointing at the uh, Gutenberg. Sorry, had to think about that. Um, but if you've labelled discontinuity, you can still have the mark. If you said Gutenberg, you can have a bonus. Okay, so what you're supposed to do here, I don't know why it's changed font, apologies for that, is just fill in the gaps. You could even create a version of this for yourselves to revise from, because it might be a nice little summary of all the margins and what you would expect. Okay, so divergent margins under the sea, the landform is a mid-ocean ridge. If you've put mid-Atlantic ridge, because it's the one I talked about the most, I will let you off with that. Okay, but there are more than just the mid-Atlantic ridge. There is another type of divergent margin, and that's when a piece of continental crust gets ripped apart. I will accept plates move apart on land or something like that. But really what's happening is you've got a lump of continental crust that's being ripped apart. And that's the rift valley. Right, convergent. There are three types and it depends on the crust involved. Okay, so the important thing to remember about oceanic, oceanic is that when you have your volcanoes, they are gonna create islands. 
So one of the landforms I was looking for was islands or island arcs. You will also get trenches or accretionary wedges. <clears throat> so any two of those will be absolutely fine. Volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis. So three different things that could kill you, those ones. Oceanic to continental, this time we've got land involved. So instead of an island arc, we've got fold mountains, but then here you could put either trench or accretionary wedge. Volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis. When it's continental, continental, there is no subduction because continental crust cannot be subducted. So your only landform is fold mountains. Then we've got our final type of margin, which you can call conservative or transform or strike slip, doesn't really matter. And that's plates moving past each other. Um, and the um, hazard is earthquakes. Oh, sorry, by scrolling down, I spotted this. Plates move past each other in different directions or in the same direction at different speeds. We talked about that quite a lot with the San Andreas fault. Okay, I'll see if I can get the font sorted on that, sorry. Um, right, delete as applicable. Oceanic crust is younger. Continental crust is lighter. Oceanic crust is continually created and destroyed. So if you think about it, that and that makes sense. Continental crust is thicker. Simple diagram, okay, again, I've gone to Google, this sort of thing would be fine. So you want to have arrows to show that they're moving towards each other, that will get you a mark. You want to label your oceanic and continental crust, that will get you a mark. You want to have some melt rising up, creating volcanoes, there's a mark. You want a trench, that will get you a mark. You might have put an accretionary wedge in there, that will get you a mark. You want some fold mountains, that would get you a mark, um, that sort of thing. So really, number of marks for number of things that you labelled. An accretionary wedge is um, an accumulation of sediment in a trench and it's formed by the sediment being scraped off the top of the subducting plate and piled up in the trench. Question 14, they're called transform faults. Question 15, oceanic crust is always the one that's subducted because it's denser or heavier. A hotspot is a sorry, an area of the mantle that is hotter than the surrounding mantle. It does exactly what it says on the tin, that one. It is literally a hot spot. The hot spot stays still and the plates move over it. So you will have an active volcano on top of the hot spot, but as the plates move, you will get the volcano gradually uh, dying out and then you get a chain of islands. Hawaii is the very best example of that. In terms of normal marks, it's out of 42. There were two bonus marks available. Um, now, please <laughs> don't get too bogged down with the grades and the marks and stuff. This is just for your kind of um, sense of how well you're doing. You've probably got an idea in your head as to what grade it is you're aiming for in A-level geography. And if your number of marks kind of puts you on track for that, fantastic. If this is a module you're struggling with, then you've got various things. Send questions to Nick, email your teacher, go back and watch the videos again, etc., etc. This test really is just a little bit of a sense for you of, am I getting this? Do I need to go back over it? Etc., etc. Okay, thanks folks.